What's up guys, in today's video I'll do a live backtesting session, so I'll take you guys along with me, with my process, I'll just guide you through my trades uh, and my notes, so yeah, without further ado, let's just get right into it. So, if you guys watched the previous video, you know that I always start with reviewing my notes from my previous session, so I'm gonna review that right now. Now I'm just gonna make a new document um, for my current backtesting session, it's gonna be a euro usd backtesting session um, going from january 2022 to january 2023 so one year of backtesting of course this will not be done in like one session this usually takes like i think 30 or, or 40 sessions to complete one year um and i'm not trying to rush the process I'm just gonna i think backtest like a few days maybe a week um each session so yeah, um, I'll link it to my trading system and I'm gonna name this EU 2022-2023. Let's save it and let's get right into it. Okay, so first we'll start with the daily bias. Now I'm gonna make sure I'm not gonna trade like Asia session or like out of session because that's something I did do in my previous backtesting sessions. Then I actually need to focus on trading on high probability time periods like the New York Open and the London Open. So I'm gonna try and check that before I enter each trade. I'm gonna start with the daily bias. Looks like we have a lot of consolidation right here. Um, but let's look where we at at the weekly time frame. Okay, so we are clearly bearish, um, but we have been accumulating since a few weeks and it's at this demand zone right here. So kind of bullish signs. Um, we have this inefficiency right here. But still doesn't matter if you see bullish signs, I'm willing to take longs. Um, on the daily, we just, I think, broke structure. Yes. Um, with this, no, we didn't break structure. This is the recent high and we are about to break structure on the daily. Um, but when I see this, I just take longs. It doesn't really matter if it is about to break structure um, is just bullish signs i'm not gonna take shorts in this in these market conditions so um, i'm gonna look for longs uh, before i look for any setup i'll always define my target first because if we are gonna trade uh, without a target then then what what are we trading right we, we want price to go somewhere and therefore we need to draw on liquidity target first for me personally i want this fair value gap um, to be filled and i usually take like this 0.5 of it so this is gonna be one target. And then my second target for potential longs is this strong supply. Now, why is this a strong supply in my opinion? Because you just clearly see that market makers have been accumulating uh, short orders. And then just like this big candle, this big, big candle just showed you that um, there was a lot of um, sell pressure from, from institutions. And this is basically where they're filled their orders. So this is a nice point of interest to maybe unload the, the long bags and just take profits and longs but that being our targets let's look for um the point of interest on the hour four and hour one time frame um where i can take potential trades off so what do i see first of all I always do the um discount and premium so i'm gonna only take trades right here um so what i'm interested in let's see yeah on the hour one it's gonna be a nice order block just inside the um, yeah discount and this is a nice break of structure tap so this is also a nice confluence I take sometimes with a setup um, this is just simple like retail stuff but it works um, you break the high you can retest it so I also take this as an extra confluence if it's inside an order block and a fair value gap in the in the discount so it's nice. So I'm looking for um, long setups right here. Um, I'm not gonna do this because this just makes no sense. Like you can draw as much point of interest as you want, but the end goal is to see a reaction of that uh, zone. And if I don't see, like there's tons of order blocks and 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 fair value gaps. Uh, so I just want to see if this. Um, point of interest is getting respected otherwise I'm not taking a trade there are some times where I take a limit long or short but mainly I just always wait for confirmation so let's wait for those okay we entered first rejection second one about to fill this fair value gap 
Okay, I like this really because we tapped into discount in this order block, this previous um, resistance, and yeah, it's looking nice because we have. Let's see if I can draw this out. We have a first sweep, second one, and a third one. And it's looking interesting because let's just delete this one because this is indicating that there's a lot of momentum right here. You see, we break the, the high that brought us to our last low and the low is perfectly bouncing off this accumulation zone. So interested in some longs right here look at this big candle this is what you want to see this is how you trade with the institutions so um yeah i'll just take the um fibonacci like the premium discount and i think i will enter right here with my stop loss at this low um let's see on the 15 minute time frame yeah, so um, I always switch between the five minute and the 15 minute just because uh, sometimes you see things on the minute five that you don't see on the minute five, 15 and vice versa. So for this particular reason, I like to trade more of this um, breaker block just because we have so much bullish momentum. I, I don't want it to see all the way coming down. Yeah, it can be, but maybe I'll just miss out on a trade and it's better to, in my opinion, just maybe enter on this minute five breaker so my entry is gonna be right here and then my stop loss can be at this low just to hire my risk to reward so let's pull these take profits towards my i mean like yeah <laughs> i defined my draw liquidity targets but i'm not gonna aim for these crazy rrs for seven r i don't do it but let's just see the reaction of certain areas and then we can take profits manually so let's see what happens okay we got stopped out i don't care we just go further as you can see i think the bias was good no the bias was not good okay let's see and review why not when did we take this trade um we took this trade 9.45 so it's actually at London open so that shouldn't be the issue let's see what I could have done better well I already see it so sometimes I like to tighten my RR but actually in my rules it says I need to put my stop loss at the low of the last sweep and if I have done that then this would have been a profitable trade because I would most probably already already take profits right here and that would be a nice um, profitable trade and I set my stop loss to break even. So I'm gonna write this down to always just follow my rules and don't try to tighten your RR to increase your RR um, because as you see it got respected beautifully um, uh, because we broke this this um, this high. So yeah. Let's write this down. And actually, one last thing I want to say is I can do this. I can increase my RR um, only if there's not some interesting point to come back to um, and the bias still remains the same. So what I mean by this is we broke structure. I'm looking for longs. Um, but we have this order block right here still that can still be mitigated as you can see um, so if I don't see like nice points of interest where maybe price can tap into before going further then I might do it so uh, yeah that's one last thing I want to say let's delete everything okay so I'm gonna backtest a little more I'm not gonna explain every trade uh, I'm not gonna break down every trade but I will do I think two or three more so let's get right into it
Okay, so one thing I want to say is I noticed myself saying a lot like, oh, this was a nice trade. I missed this. I missed out. Look, this was a sweep and a perk structure. I could have ended right here. It's crazy. Three, four, five, six R. Um, if you're like that, please stop it because if you keep blaming, like, it's your fault that you missed this. Like, <laughs> you can see tons of opportunities, but only the ones you take, um, you take. Uh, I mean, it makes no sense if I say this, but you just have to understand that just don't blame the markets on missing opportunity. It's all on you. It's just all on you. And don't say like, I missed this. No. Yes, I mean, you missed this, but it's, it's completely your fault. And it's not because you missed this that you're actually a profitable trader because a profitable trader also means you catch every opportunity you see and you didn't so you can't say like okay emma i can make crazy i can make crazy profits from the market if you miss the setup it's all on you trading is for me personally i realize not just having a profitable strategy um but it's mostly just execution are you showing up were you there when when um your trading plan was developing no then just shut the fuck up because you can't say like i could have taken this trade just say it's completely on me. I'm not a profitable trader because I missed a setup. So yeah, I hope this makes sense. <laughs> okay, so again, we are at the range high. So should act as a resistance for retail traders. Um, sometimes it does, but let's just watch out for that and not force any longs. Um, this is an area of interest. Again, this is so simple, guys. Just some, some areas of interest in the discount, but trading is just all about keeping it simple and just showing up when you need to um so yeah okay so usually when you see these kind of candles like the long is over i like to look for shorts when this happens because yes this is indicating displacement and we want to look for entries on the retracement to maybe target even higher but like when a candle is like this big like three times bigger than the, the normal candles developing um then you're too late i think um maybe of course it can still go higher but it's not favorable um in my opinion of course um because look we are also mitigated this the candle with the with the next hour one so yeah let's just see where we at look at this don't force any longs because we are literally at the equilibrium of this fair value gap um only if i see strong confirmation i'll maybe look for some longs but i'm not gonna force anything and especially not gonna set a limit right here okay so this doesn't look very bullish anymore we're just accumulating let's cut the r1 time frame okay so we entered back inside the i think discount yeah um let's see if you look for any bullish signs so we can enter on the bullish bias okay so as i said i'll also look for shorts because we're just overbought um this is a nice area of interest and we made an inducement right here so this can act as an an extra confluence so let's see and it's okay to just delete your points of interest if they don't play out if they don't get respected that's the, the name of the game you just draw out what you think will get respected if it doesn't just delete it if it does just take the trade that simple so we switched very bearish yeah so let's look for some shorts just following the trend if the trial liquidity, the main objective is not taken out already, of course. But in my opinion, this is really strong trend line liquidity that can be taken out in the near future. Also, sometimes maybe a, a nice tip um, for the beginners out here, you can draw like a favela gap right here and then you see, oh, but uh, this doesn't look interesting. Well, 
what I like to do is just refine it um, on the lower term frame because this is not very really good right here. You can refine it right here. And like the smaller the points of interest, the cleaner it looks in my opinion. I can't extend it right here because it's not an interesting right here. On the lower time frame, it all becomes clear what happened here. So yeah, let's see. Okay, we just stepped into this. Now let's look if it's looking good to maybe short. I like this. We have this low and this low. Um, and they might look not equal lows, but if you just do this, squint your eyes and look at these lows, then they're basically equal. So it doesn't have to be like precise. Um, as long as this high is a little bit higher, um, it's okay. And I can target these for my for my draw liquidity. Um, let's see if I can maybe see a double sweep um, or a break of structure. Okay, double sweep. I like this. Let's see if we can catch. Yes, this is a break of structure. Where can I potentially enter? That's the question. Yeah, I'm going to market enter right here, actually, because we broke structure and we just tap back into this order block. So let's see. My stop loss is going to be at this high. It's going to be my invalidation. And then my take profit is going to be here. Sell market 1%. Okay. Again, stop loss hit. Doesn't matter. Just go on. Guys, this is just horrible price action. Like, what the f is this? Um, I'm not gonna blame my, my my losing trades because of this, but still, it can maybe play a big factor into into having bad trades. Okay, okay, I like this. We broke structure. Um, let's make this a little cleaner for you guys. Um, yeah, we have one sweep, second sweep, third sweep of structure um, so let's look for an entry of this I really get I'm gonna YOLO my stop loss right here <laughs> because I don't want it to come actually I do want that this looks like it's gonna head to my stop loss, so I'm gonna mm, put it right here at this top of the order block and then just target this low for nice 2R. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, again. You just witnessed me not following my trading plan. And guys, if you have a trading strategy, can all work fun and stuff. I, I, I don't have my trading strategy next to me. I should have it. Okay. I'm just gonna dump this in my face because I was literally not following my trading strategy. Stop loss at the high or low of last sweep. What did I do? I didn't set my stop loss at the high of the last sweep and if I did target lower, would have been a trade mitigating this Farvelli gap. Would have taken an entry, an exit right here for a nice 1.6. Okay. Still a bad trade, doesn't matter. But you know what I mean, better than a loss, of course. <laughs> Every profit is a profit. Um, so let's get right into it. Yeah, I'm showing you guys the reality of, of, of just trading. I'm, I'm not trying to 
trying to get her some good trades so I can show you I backtest like a god. No, I'm just documenting my journey. Okay, so my camera died again. I changed the batteries and let's go and lock in. Again, we are still in this freaking boring range. This looks clean though. We have one, two, three inside this nice zone. Um, and we might look for an entry of this order block, which already got tapped. Maybe we can look for another. Yes. Yes, now I want to see this low getting broken. Okay. Um, let's see, we have a nice displacement candle. Um, and we have this right when mitigating this order block. This was the low. No, this was the low that brought us to our last high. And we just broke that. So this looks interesting, especially on the minute 15. Um, yeah, like this short stop loss at this high targeting Let's see I think targeting mm. these lows no if it takes out this lows it can't take it out this low and also this so I'm just gonna make this towards the range low not gonna be a market one it's gonna be a limit okay nice entry we got tapped in and now we got to make sure we manage the position Okay, so we broke this low, so uh, I'm going to put my stop loss break even. Ooh, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> stop loss, um, I mean my take profit got front rent by some pips. Let's see if we still can get it. Yes, sir. Okay, so that's a nice 3.5R. Um, so yeah, nice trade. I'll always um, tell my notes why this was a profitable trade. So first of all, I'm gonna um, take a screenshot of it with clean annotations. Um, so basically what was the reason for the entry? First of all, tree dive into this, yeah, what should we call it? Just the, the tap of the, of the breaker block right here. Then we made a new low, looking for another point of interest, which was this R1 order block. Um, we swapped into it, looked bearish again. We broke structure with a low, brought us to our last um, high. And then I entered on the equilibrium of this vertical structure candle, targeting just trying liquidity on the very high time frame, which was in this case the range low. So nice trade, I'm gonna write this down. Okay, so I'm just gonna back this for a while and catch you guys after some trades.
yeah so really bad session i'm like three percent into drawdown um but that's the reality of trading but of course if you're actually taking a trade on live accounts um there's more to be looking at for example at correlated pairs at the dollar index at news events i don't see all of these things i'm just like eyeballing some trades and i should do better but this is just a video to show you guys what my process is um how i actually like take the notes simultaneously um, to just keep getting better and better so yeah i hope you guys learned something from this video um again just documenting my journey if you like this type of content would appreciate the like and subscribe and then i i know that i should keep going with this content um because i know if i keep going i don't care if it takes me another few months years five years at the end if i'm profitable i made it so that's the end goal and i enjoyed the process so i hope you enjoy it with me peace out